one 800 449 The imbalanced, horribly confused Clark the Shark show. I'm talking about the radio show, you guys. I'm not talking about this quirky Black Sabbath album here, Never Say Die, uh, that weirdly is probably me, I, Clark the Shark's favorite. Don't ask me how or why, you guys. And also don't ask me how or why suddenly Clark the Shark is like getting so big on the internet again. Some people think it's because of the uh, Clark the Shark talk radio stuff. It's really interesting, you guys, my life back in Redondo, Torrance, Hermosa Beach. Uh, buying records, vinyls at uh, Lamita record stores and Go Boy. It's so interesting, you guys. You're all enthralled by it. Wow. I mean, I never thought a guy buying scratchy vinyls at the Rhodium in Torrance could be so intriguing to listen to. And this album here, Black Sabbath, Never Say Die. I bought at the Rhodium a used copy in shitty condition, you guys, horrible. But I took it home on my little record player and it sounded fucking hella good. Good enough for me, Sharky. Uh, and this album has taken abuse, criticism, all kinds of uh, unfair pannings. Uh, by fans, critics, magazines, even the band members, uh, and me, Clark the Shark, I'm going to give you the only review that really matters about this album because it's coming from me, yours truly, the shark doodle doo the shark a lamb a ding dong right here from the golden EIB Sharkophone. It's not a microphone, baby. It's a Sharkophone because it's solid gold. And uh, Hush Bimbo just before he died of cancer, he actually uh, spit into a bag. He filled a bag full of his precious saliva and he poured it all over a golden, I should say the golden EIB uh, microphone. I got to call it that because that's what it was. And then he Amazon like, uh, mailed it to Clark the Shark, and it was turned into the Sharker phone, you guys. 1-800-449-8255. I'm not kidding. Uh, this is the re real true story. I've been lying to you guys or pulling your fucking leg. The truth is Hush Bimbo, just bef before he died, uh, I think he died of lung cancer, the greatest of all time. You go to his grave, dude, you guys. It says the greatest of all time, and I'm actually offended at that. Because as everyone knows, it's me, truly I, Clark the Shark, who is the great one. Not Wayne Gretzky, not Mark Levin, not Hannity, not Howard Douchebag. Or... There's only two guys better than me, you guys, and that's uh, Dr. Demento. I admit it, you know, he's got better timing, more skills. Unlike Clark the Shark, he doesn't stutter. And... Uh, Mario Lopez because uh, people say he's better looking and taller than Clark the Shark. I don't think he's really taller, you guys. Better looking, definitely. But um, this album cover, uh, Black Sabbath Never Say Die, is good looking to me. I love these two like pilots or, you know, and then you look up in the clouds and you see like the ghosts of Japanese or German or uh, something, you know, I guess these are British pilots or maybe American. I don't know, you guys are some kind of maybe evil, like satanic pilots. I mean, it's after all, you guys, it's Black Sabbath. <laughs> I don't know, but up in the clouds, you look and you can see ghosts of maybe the people they shot down. Now, uh, when they recorded this album, Ozzy was actually out of the band for a bit. And then he came back and uh, everyone was heavily in drugs, alcohol, the whole bit, you guys. But in particularly Ozzy, 
uh, was really having a bad time here. And they just barely like got this recording done or something. And they put out the album and it was a big disappointment to everyone, you guys, but not me, yours truly, shark a doodle do I love this album. It's probably weirdly, uh, maybe my favorite, you guys, maybe, maybe not. Uh, along with Sabotage, which I love, and Technical Ecstasy, you know, the only problem with Technical Ecstasy is probably those lyrics. Uh, the, the songs are fucking great on that album. And I can kind of say that, too, uh, with this album, Never Say Die, Black Sabbath, uh, what an incredible album, 1978. Um, I was in the eighth grade at Newton Middle School in Torrance. And I remember, uh, you know, people having this album. I was a little young, but I wanted to buy it. You know, I didn't have a lot of money at age 12, 13, 14, you guys. I had to start washing dishes at Cortapassi's Deli. Uh, down on Avenue I in Redondo Beach, right by 31 Flavors, Baskin Robbins or whatever. Down there, me, Clark the Shark, I'd be, you know, uh, I mean, washing dishes is just like a step away from being a swimming pool cleaner, you guys. Um, it's about as glamorous. You get all sweaty. But that's how the vinyl collection began to get built right there around 1979, 80, 81. And one of the earliest albums I bought, I'm not kidding, was this one, you guys. Probably when I was 15 or 16, Black Sabbath Never Say Die at the Rhodium in Torrance. And I think I later was in Go Boy Records down in Redondo looking at uh, a better version of this with less scratches. Uh, for like three bucks or five bucks or something. I'm not sure if I bought it. To the best of my knowledge, I only have one copy of this amazing album that I love. And I used to play this a lot about 1986, uh, along with the Allman Brothers and Technical Ecstasy and David Bowie albums kind of intermingled. Uh, when I lived over there in Torrance, uh, the guy, Dave, bass player, extraordinary, extraordinary genius. Um, Dave and his mom had a room open in Torrance. I think it was 239th Street. I'm not sure. But infamously, that's where I lived below Cindy, you guys. And I would be playing Plenty of Sabbath. Um, you know, Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, and we sold our souls, uh, sold our soul for rock and roll. And every album, volume four, you guys, I, I couldn't get me enough Sabbath. But I don't know why I love this album so much. I just fell in love with this. And it could be because my brain, uh, the Clark the Shark, my eclectic mind, uh, I like to make weird music that's all fucked up. And that's how this album is. This album's confusing and quirky and loaded with snakes and arrows and you know, twists and turns. And it's just like they sound lost on this album and beyond confused. They almost sound like they're all just giving up. And that's what I fucking love about it. Uh, they're at the end of their rope, the end of their wits end sort of thing. The singer's a drug addict. They're getting rid of the guy. He's already quit the band once. He's going to quit again. You know how it is, you guys, when all these drug addicts are trying to record or if there's just one and he's like the main guy, it just fucks it all up and makes it so bad right here on the Clark the Shark show. But I love it, you guys. Uh, I don't care what they say. I don't care what the stars give it. It's probably going to get bad stars. But, um, you know, it gets kind of an okay little write-up. All music just gives it a one and a half star out of five. That's inaccurate. And the Rolling Stone album guide, three out of five. That's more accurate. Me, Clark the Shark, 
I'd have given this like a four and a half out of five or a four out of five, you guys, right here on the Clark the Shark show. And, um, you know, we're going to bust into the track listing here, you guys. Now, side one starts out with one of the greatest songs in rock and roll ever recorded in history, you guys. And this song, this up-tempo little kick-ass song, Never Say Die, almost reminds me more of the Stooges or like Iggy Pop uh, than Black Sabbath. And it's just a kick-ass song. I mean, uh, Tony Yomi sounds awesome here. Uh, it's a very high-end, mid-rangey guitar tone. But I fucking love it, you guys. And I love the drumming, too. Never Say Die. Uh, you can't go wrong with that song, you guys. That is a classic anthem. It's awesome. One of the best Black Sabbath songs flat out uh, that they have, you guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it kind of borrows a melody from the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper. I'm not kidding. If you speed up the song, Sgt. Pepper, it sounds a little like Never Say Die. I think it's like G to, to E to A or something. Like a lot of progressions, uh, a lot of bands and songs use that progression. But here it is used to like perfection or something by Black Sabbath. I love the little power anthem, the up-tempo, little fast rocker, Never Say Die. It should have been a bigger hit, you guys. And I know you guys love it, too. Weirdly, it's not really heavy metal. It's almost like alternative or like new wave or punk uh, sounding or something. And yet, that being said, it very much is hard rocking, kick-ass, almost like metal or something. Awesome. Johnny Blade. Now, this song's interesting, you guys. A lot of people say this song is cheesy. It's like it's fucking gay. It's lame. But honestly, uh, back in the day, there weren't really shitty lame songs like this uh, in 1978, you guys. Um, the lyrics are problematic, but the song itself is really fucking good. And I love all the keyboards and shit. Uh, on this album that are also all over the album before Technical Ecstasy from 1976 you guys uh, but Johnny Blade I love it you guys I, I don't have any problem with it I admit it's kind of hokey and retarded you know the lyrics could have been better I see some missed opportunities big time in Johnny Blade but it's melodic you guys it's a good song. It's great. I don't have uh, too many issues with Johnny Blade like other people do. Junior's Eyes, the song that Ozzy wrote, uh, you know, like about his dad dying or his dad, you know, his dad's funeral or killer song, you guys. Um, I like Junior's Eyes. I like the lyrics, the me, you know, the whole bit. It's killer. Uh, I don't know how none of these songs on side A are lit up in blue. They should all be, especially Never Say Die. But Junior's Eyes is awesome, you guys. All 642 of it. And these songs are pretty long, you guys. I know you get the feel like this album is short, but it's got long songs on this album uh, for really good, catchy, melodic material with great fucking guitar tones and keyboards and arrangements and uh, fucking killer drumming. The songs are fairly long, uh, and it's almost like you don't want to change a thing. You want this album just the way it is right here on the fabulous Clark the Shark show. I admit a hard road sounds like Tommy James and the Shondells. Uh, Dragon the Line, it does, you guys. Listen to both songs. There's similarities there. Right here from the Golden EIB Sharkraphone. I like the song, though. A Hard Road. Now, Side 2 gets super interesting to me. Clark the Shark. Shockwave. 
is awesome. The first song. Many times in my days, I've cranked this song, you guys. All 515 of it. <laughs> and you guys know that song is really good. But Air Dance is probably the most interesting song on the album where it's got this piano that's like David Bowie uh, pinups or something or David Bowie, uh, you know, like that fast piano that sounds so killer. I love Air Dance. It's like about this girl dancer who used to be so great long ago, but now she's getting old and only dances in her dreams or only in her mind. It's so fucking awesome air dance what a song 517 and over to you really underrated black sabbath song you guys fucking awesome i love that song i love side two of this you guys it's like it gets better than side one or something and it does uh this is nothing like other black sabbath albums not even like technical ecstasy you guys it is a mistake of accidents and anomalies accidentally gone well, gone right. Don't ask me how, you guys. Uh, I love Over To You. It competes for my favorite song on the album right here on the Clark the Shark Show. Break out the instrumental. Really good. Uh, it was supposed to have vocals, but Ozzy either wouldn't or refused to sing or something. And it ends up a great instrumental um, breakout fucking killer. And maybe the most interesting song on the album, Swing in the Chain. <laughs> Another one of those songs with like Bill Ward singing or something. It's, uh, you know, I like it. I do, you guys. I always wondered the story behind it, and I guess there was some controversy where, once again, Ozzy, who was out of the band for a bit, and there was another singer in, and then that didn't last, and then Ozzy came back. But he wouldn't sing Swing in the Chain, you guys. So, like, uh, much like um, It's All Right from Technical Ecstasy, uh, Bill Ward is singing Swing in the Chain. Check it, you guys. It's not a Waldo. Right here on the Clark the Shark Show, where I'm breaking down a review of just one of the most interesting, incredible Black Sabbath albums, Never Say Die. An album that, to say the least, or to say the most, is underrated, you guys. Uh, and I don't like to call anything underrated or overrated or... You know, I look at things like it is what it is, but this album isn't what it is. I can't say it is what it is about this album. Every time you listen to this, it's going to be different and you're going to hear something new. I'm not kidding, you guys. Just by accident, just by clumsy, you know, stumbling around, you put on Never Say Die, uh, the album by Sabbath, 1978, and you're going to see exactly what I see and hear, too, right here on the Clark the Shark Show. You are going to be more than pleasantly surprised at what you hear with this album. And you're also going to say how this album uh, is so eclectic and it doesn't sound anything like what you would expect from Black Sabbath or other Sabbath albums uh, it's weird how it's at times not heavy and it's beautiful and melodic and, uh, you know, it's got kick-ass shit all over it, you guys. Let's be honest. Uh, but there's something like lovely about this album. And it was sad that it would be Ozzy's last with the band until later on, like in the 2000s, 2013, they put out another album. Uh, but I don't think that album, uh, you know, I, I haven't even really heard that one 13 or whatever by Sabbath. I can tell you right now, it's not as good as this fucking classic, amazing album right here. That is maybe my favorite by black Sabbath. You guys, I fucking love this album, 
me, Clark the Shark, 1-800-4498-255, the Wolfman Jack on crack from the amazing golden EIB Sharkerphone. It's not a microphone, baby. It's a Sharkerphone because I'm going to give you the only review you will ever want or ever need of this incredible album, this eclectic, atmospheric, melodic, uh, spellbinding album, you guys, hypnotizing. It is great. And I'm sick of people saying it's mediocre or shitty or they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, you guys. Don't go to them. You come to me, Clark the Shark, when you want the truth, not just about music, but about anything in life, anything in this matrix simulation that we're all living in. Because it's not a matrix, it's a shark trick. So I'm just playing a joke on all of you. I created all of you, you guys. You're just figments of my imagination. And it isn't a simulation, it's a sharkulation, you guys. And I actually created this band, Black Sabbath. And I organized them all just for you. For your entertainment, for your enjoyment, for your beauty, if you will your proverbial mind wanderings right here on the Clark the Shark Show. I want you to buy this album at Amazon, iTunes, Spotify. I do indeed, you guys. And uh, remember my guarantee to you, Clark the Shark Show will be number one on Earth, Venus, Mars, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, and especially on Uranus. And if you're not completely satisfied, you guys, I'll give you 109% of your shark back. I'm giving you extra sharky this month, you guys. So be prepared in the comments below. Uh, if you want some extra shark, you can click on the link below. And much like Hush Bimbo, I will spit in a bag and mail it to you, and you'll get my DNA. And I don't want any of you girls doing anything fucking weird with my saliva when I mail it to you. Don't go in the bathroom, uh, bathroom M, and rub it on yourself because that's gross. But um, if you have to and you feel you must, then go ahead. And it's I won't sue you uh, or anything, you guys. I might. Can't guarantee that either. But, um, of course, Tony Yomi, the greatest guitarist in the history of rock music. Uh, he always gets great tones, you guys. Amazing. Ozzy, the shrill, whiny singer with the horrible voice. But I love it because it's so artistic. And of course, Geezer, uh, the John Entwistle of Sabbath, the Mike Rutherford of the band, uh, maybe the Dirk McQuickly, you can call him what you will, but Geezer Butler, incredible. Bill Ward, who was later replaced by Apathy, that's a bummer, you know, when Dio comes around. But I love Bill Ward, you guys, and me, Clark the Shark, you guys know that I know drumming. You guys, come on. You know Clark the Shark does. I don't like to talk about my drumming. It's a, you know, it's a sore spot, a source of frustration because everyone just thinks I'm a drummer or whatever. But if I really was as good as Bill Ward, then I wouldn't mind. You guys can fucking talk about my drumming all you want, but I'm not that good. He's fucking amazing. All four of these geniuses, you guys. Sadly... Ozzy is going to leave us soon. He's really old, sick. I don't think he can tour anymore, you guys. I think all four of them, they're not going to be around, you guys. I'm not even sure if uh, uh, Ward and Butler are here. I don't know. But Tony Iomi is, and Ozzy is. Um, sad that we all get old, you guys. I'm turning 59 on April 27th. Uh, it's sad, but happy. I'm still here, Clark the Shark, and I am the biggest Black Sabbath fan, mainly because of the guitar, the heavy kick-ass guitar of Tony Iommi, but also the way he makes it mellow with acoustic and shit, and it's beautiful. And, you know, everything. The lyrics, though they may get cheesy and lame at times, I still stand by it all. Uh... And I'm so sorry, you guys. It took me forever to review my favorite band, Black Sabbath. Uh, I think I did 
tons of reviews on this on the old YouTube channel that was banned and deleted by the socialists at the big four, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, you know, Instagram or whatever. Um, you know, make no mistake, Elon Musk is just a liberal, you guys, in, dis in dis disguise. He's banning all my Twitters right now, same as when uh, the liberal Jack Dorsey was banning all my Twitters. So don't get this feeling that Elon Musk is going to help uh, the right-wing Republican Trump cause because he's not. The guy's just a billionaire. I don't even think he's that smart. His mom just left him a bunch of money. He probably doesn't even know about Black Sabbath, you guys, the way I, Clark the Shark, do. And I would never ban or delete any of you all over the country from Redondo Beach to New York to Seattle to Florida to Oklahoma to Missouri. I want you to be honest about Clark the Shark. When you write about me, talk about me, comment me. Say the truth. If you don't like me, fucking say it. If you love me, you can say it. But I think that's creepy because you don't really know me to love me. I don't even think the people back in Redondo Beach and Torrance, the South Bay, they don't know me either, you guys. They're always like, what, Clark? Clark's in the music? He was in a band? Like, dude, it's like that kind of fucking shit. At 1-800-449-8255, people just jump on bandwagons. Me, I don't really do that, and I'm hoping that all of you will change. And just be all alone. Quit hanging out with people at bars, drinking. Go home and listen to some Black Sabbath, Never Say Die, all by yourself. And you're going to discover what Clark the Shark already knows. That this is an incredible album. And go buy it at Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, especially if you're a young person who was born in 2003 and you're only 21 years old. You were born two years after 9-11 when those Al-Qaeda terrorists flew those jets into the Twin Towers in New York. That's right, you young person that's only 19, 20, 21 years old. I want you to buy some Black Sabbath, Never Say Die, and damn the critics. Damn the fans who don't like this fucking album. They don't know what they're talking about. This fucking album's amazing because you heard it from me, Clark the Shark. And I'm out of here. Peace.